In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of all ages, Amen. Powerful gospel message, this one, that the Lord gives us to remind us of the meaning of His commandments. It says here that He was asked something. The, the, the Lord was asked a question by this young man. And the Lord responded very simply. So the, the point I want us to take with us today is to think about what does it mean to have faith in God. Like I want you to picture that compass you see on the screen as pointing to true north. Our true north is our faith. Where is our faith? Where does our, paint, our, our faith point to? And most importantly, who does it point to? It's the who that matters in, in this particular a case. So just to bring you back into the main part, the Lord Jesus was going on out on the road. One came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So the Lord said to him, you know the commandments. My question for you though, is it enough to know the commandments? I mean, is it enough to just know the commandments? I can know the commandments. You can ask anyone on the street, what are the 10 commandments, for example? Most people will be able to name a bunch of them. A lot of people think that um, being a Christian means I know the Ten Commandments. Till this day in the 21st century, there are Christians in the Christian world, regardless of the denomination they follow, they believe that the, it's, to, it's about the Ten Commandments. And they believe that it's enough to just follow a bunch of commandments. I know the commandments. I know them. But again, the question for us today, is it enough to know the commandments? Or just know them. Because... I can know them with my mind. I could be a theologian with my mind. I could teach theology in schools. I can have a, a PhD in theology and have no true understanding of who is he who gave us these commandments. And the difference between being able to keep the commandments and not is knowing who gave them to me. This is the main difference. There are commandments that have been followed by people before they were even written down. Like for example, Joseph, the righteous in the Old Testament. He had no commandment telling him you shall not commit adultery. And yet, he was very bold and said to the Lord, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He, he, he kept the connection with his God beyond a written commandment. Because his connection was with he who gave the commandment. It was written in his heart, like St. Paul speaks of. It wasn't just something he read on papyrus or in a book. Many examples are like that. St. Paul tells us, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. So you can change the word gospel to commandment. I'm not ashamed of the commandment or the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. So everyone who believes in he who commanded. Again, when the Lord said to him, you know the commandments, and he said, this, 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 and that. And he said, I've kept all these from my youth. He said, you lack one thing. Was it because the Lord is after his money? Think about it with me for a second. Does the Lord want this man's money? Of course not. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. The Lord is not material. So what did the Lord want from him? He says, come follow me. At the end of the day, it's about you and me. It's not about you and the commandments. The commandment is given to you as a tutor to find me. It's not for you to, oh, I've kept the command. Because there are many people who keep some and break others. But say, well, I kept that one. But the idea, again, if I love he who gave them to me, I will keep the command in him. So, just an example again. St. Paul tells us in the same passage, the next verse actually. Romans 1 verse 17. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Faith to faith in what? So you have a measure of faith given to you the day you are baptized. And then that faith increases as you grow. Nurtured by your parents, nurtured by the church, nurtured by your Sunday school servants. Nurtured, nurtured, nurtured from faith to faith. Just like Abraham was given a, a, a command to do something. And he went and then it was a greater one and a greater one to grow from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Not by memory. Not by rote memory. The just does not live by what they memorize. 
The just lives by who they believe in. That's the difference between the just who are made just by he whom they believe in and those who are just memorizing commands. So this was St. Paul basically taking from Habakkuk or Habakkuk in, in, the, in the Old Testament, chapter 2. He says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So there's the command written. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Again, live by his faith in God. His soul is not upright in him. Why? Because he does not trust in God. This young man walked away as many people walk away from God because they do not trust that he who commanded is able to perform or he who promised is able to perform. Say, that's too hard to love my enemy. What do you mean love my enemy? What do you mean bless those who curse me? What do you mean do good to those who hate me? What do you mean pray for those who spitefully use me? It's too hard. The commandment, it's too hard being a Christian. No, my friend, it's not too hard being a Christian. If you know who he is who died for you on the cross on Good Friday, and what does it mean that he gives you his Holy Spirit to dwell in you, pours him in abundance in you, you will do, like he said, greater things than these. Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. You can imagine that that young man was calculating with his own understanding the meaning of, wait a minute, if I have to leave everything I own, I mean, I have to go sell that. I have that piece of land up north that I have to go give away. And there's that building I own, I don't know where. And there's this village. And then there's that, oh, and I have this Swiss bank account. And I have, imagine all that calculating. By the time he's done calculating, he has forgotten what Jesus asked him to do. He asked him, follow me, love me, follow me, follow me. So again, I'm bringing you back to Abraham. You remember that? The scene of Abraham and the, the command from faith to faith till he was asked, Abraham, give me your son whom you love. Again, from faith to faith. First it was Abraham, pack, pack up and go. I'll tell you where to stop. All the way to that moment. And Abraham's love for his son was immense. You can only imagine a father, a mother loving their child. But his love for God was made enabling him to love his son and wait for him to come. His love for God was not just, again, I have to obey God's orders, period. Grudgingly, angrily, frustrated. Why? Why is God doing this? Question marks all the time. No, no, not, not like that at all. It was a great love. You can imagine the scene like when the Lord Jesus himself says, your father Abraham saw my day and was glad. Before Abraham was about to slay his son, and he did slay him by intention. His heart fully did it. He could imagine when he saw that ram caught by its horns in the thicket or that lamb that he imagined Jesus by prophecy on the cross. These are the images that are there to remind us. And this happened to Abraham for our benefit, for our edification, for our salvation. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him or credited to him for righteousness. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise offered his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. He believed in God who promised. He believed in the God who told him. He knew that he who promised was able to perform. So if God has given you a command to do something, Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your wife just as Christ loved the church. Forgive with all your heart. Say, well, how can I do this? It's too hard. It is not too hard in Jesus. Through Jesus. By Jesus. Ask Him. Ask Him in faith. Believe in He who asks you. Don't just memorize the verse. Live the verse. Big difference. It is not enough to keep the commands. It's not enough to just know them by rote memory. I have to live them. Reciting verses is not sufficient. In the book of Daniel, we see another example of those who believed in he who commanded. The three young men in the furnace who were threatened with death by burning in a blazing pit if they don't worship Nebuchadnezzar. 
And they basically told him with all politeness and courtesy, and we've spoken of this before, but it, it remains relevant for us always. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. We do not need to speak to you about this. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. We know he is. I know my God. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. You can imagine, like St. Peter says, with meekness and fear. They spoke in meekness and fear. Not afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, but in fear of God who can save. And in love of him who can save. They know that he can save them from the fire. But if he does not save them, they will still not worship anything else but God. Because they know God. It's like that hope that Jonah had in, in, the, in the belly of the whale. Jonah in chapter 2 prays a short 10 verse prayer when he's in the belly of the fish. And it's all in faith and in hope in him who not only can bring him out of the whale but allowed him to get swallowed by the whale who called him to go preach to the Ninevites and so on. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, says Jonah. But I will sacrifice you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Are you sure, Jonah? I mean, you're at the bottom of the sea. In the belly of a great fish. Are you sure about this? He goes, absolutely. Absolutely. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Just like St. Paul says, I am persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He knew it. He said, regardless, I'm in this dark belly of a fish. I'm supposed to be digested by now, praying these words, consumed by the gastric juices in this fish's stomach. But I still know in whom I believe. I know in whom I, I count on. And I know who asked me to do what he asked me to do. This is for us again. The Lord has said to us, and you remember with this past Tuesday, we commemorated the miracle of the moving of the mountain, Mokattam in, in, in Cairo, during the time of Pope Abraham the 67th by the faith of St. Simon the Tanner. So St. Simon is depicted here next to the Pope with the people who threatened to basically or accused that this verse is meaningless and not real and the people of God who fasted and prayed next to them. And we see in them that faith. Simon the Tanner, simple man, but he had faith like this, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. What kind here? Let's take that first kind we want to worry about is that kind called doubt and despair and cynicism and being jaded and questioning God on everything and putting my mind at the level of the mind of God and telling him why and why and why. Let's pray that we can, by prayer and fasting, get rid of that cancerous tumor in our souls so that we can begin having simple faith that can move mountains. Simple like that. It starts with prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is basically food for the soul. It's, it seems odd to think that if I stop eating, I'll get fat spiritually. Yes, you will. You'll get nourished. I'm not saying stop eating, die to death, fast and starvation. So the idea of... That, that discipline of the soul leads to the strengthening of the soul. So St. Paul, when he tells us something like this, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, you see St. Paul giving us that reminder. It's all about you and him, you and Jesus. He doesn't mention a commandment here. And Galatians 2.20 is not just for us to recite it because I know the verse. It's living it that will lead me to grow and understand. This is what we're called to. That your faith, St. Paul says, should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith is in God. The Lord tells us on the tongue of Jeremiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Think of it. Is there anything too hard for God? There are people who say, How could God become man? Why? Is it too hard for God to be incarnate in the flesh that he created? What's so difficult? There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Nothing. Nothing. If he chooses it. 
and nothing he chooses is beyond his love for us. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. So St. Paul reminds us that we walk by faith, not by sight. Again, if you're just going to look at a commandment and wait for it to happen and wonder what's going on in your life and why what you want hasn't happened yet, you might fall along the path. The command will begin to be too heavy on you because rather than focusing on him who commanded it, you're fo focusing on your human capacity to fulfill it. And our human capacity, as we all know, is very limited. Again, in the same book of Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, it says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, and though there should be no fruit on the vine, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, in the Lord I will rejoice, in the God of my salvation. Even if I see nothing good around me, I'm in complete darkness, just like Jonah and the whale, just like this or that, just like Abraham taking his son up the mountain to kill him, I still will believe in my God. This is what we're taught by these heroes of faith. That's why St. John is able to tell us, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. You see how he connects it to the love of God? If I do not love God, the command is burden. The command is difficult. The command leads to be perfectionist. The command leads to all kinds of things because it's not for he who loved me and gave himself for me. It's could be, it could even be for self-righteousness. It could be for the sake of saying, I've kept the commands. I know the commands. St. Paul tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's why St. John tells us in the same kind of theme or spirit, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Your faith, again, our faith in what? Again, not in what, but in who? In whom is your faith? Whom do you believe? Who? And when you doubt him, say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. Say the exact same thing. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this faith can give me to do things I wasn't thinking I would ever be able to do. Because again, it's, it's not faith in myself. Like when people say, have faith in yourself, I'm not too sure about that one. Have faith in God, yes, absolutely. Have faith in yourself, in God, definitely. But if it's you alone, be careful. Be, be, be careful with that one. Faith alone is not a safe one. Faith in God is definite. And that's why St. Paul is able to tell us, sitting in a prison cell, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. The command again, in Christ Jesus. It says in the Psalms, He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. You see the news. You go on all that social media stuff that you're on. You see all kinds of stuff happening in the world. It disturbs you. Even I don't know if you've noticed the trend lately, but for the past while, I don't know how long it's been, more and more warning, disturbing content. See, the reporter tells you, uh, we have to warn you, the following is disturbing. Oh, we have to warn you, the following images are difficult to watch. And they keep telling you that. And they keep telling you that. And preparing your mind to live that way. My goodness, difficult. Difficult images. Why are you watching them in the first place? Why are you disturbing yourself in the first place? Why are you allowing them to control you? And control your mind and how you live your day and go about living with your neck down, living in fear and worry and despondency rather than say, the world does not belong to the news network. The world belongs to the God who created me and loved me and gave himself for me. That's why the psalmist says this, trust in the Lord. My heart is steadfast regardless of the evil tidings, regardless of the problems that exist around me. I will not fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This is what we're told. Micah tells us, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for my God. The God of my salvation, mine, personally, my God will hear me. Isaiah tells us, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It's as if Isaiah, by the eye of prophecy, by the spirit of prophecy, could picture the image of the Lord putting his hand, plunging his arm into the sea to pull St. Peter out as he was drowning. It's incredible. Isaiah, the, the vivid imagery that Isaiah has and the understanding he has is beyond. 
And again, it's because of he who gave him the word, not because Isaiah was creative in writing. There's a big difference. Let's pray, please, together that our faith may no longer be in a religion, an institution, a commandment, but in the God who gave us these commandments and is able to perform every promise he's promised us. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.